The United States and Philippine troops, staged a mock attack and sinking a Chinese-made enemy ship in the West Philippine Sea, amid high tension over Manila's territorial dispute with Beijing. The strike, the culmination of this year's largest ever military exercise between the two allies, took place off the western coast of northern Luzon near Taiwan, was witnessed by journalists and diplomats, from sandy coast of Luwag City in Ilocos Norte where the military set up a monitoring platform. Target of the Philippines, U.S. and Australian military forces integrated land, sea and air assault was the BRP Lake Caliraya. The Philippine Navy's only Chinese-made naval asset, targeted 15 kilometers away from the coast of Luwag. The assault began with Philippine and U.S. platforms, firing various types of ordnance including the Sea Star. The anti-ship missiles, designed and produced by South Korean company Lig Nex-1, was launched by the flagship of the Philippine Navy, BRP Jose Rizal FF-150. The event marked the very first time the frigate, designed and built by HD Hyundai Industries, launched an anti-ship missile. The target ship was also struck by a Spike NLOS missile, GBU-38 Joint Direct Attack Munitions, and 2.75-inch Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System rockets, against the mock target. Philippine Air Force's F-A-50 fighter jets and United States F-16, a single-engine supersonic multirole fighter aircraft, also dropped bombs on the target enemy ship. During Balacadan 2024, the Philippine Navy's Jose Rizal class frigate successfully fired the Sea Star anti-ship cruise missile for the first time. With a displacement of 2,600 tons, the BRP Jose Rizal measures 107 meters in length and 13.8 meters in beam, providing substantial stability and endurance for long missions. Its propulsion system is a combined diesel and diesel arrangement, using four MTUSTX 12-cylinder diesel engines. This setup allows the ship to reach speeds up to 25 knots or 46 km per hour with a range of 4,500 nautical miles. The ship can accommodate up to 110 people, including a crew of 65. BRP Jose Rizal is outfitted with sophisticated sensor and weapon systems for multi-domain operations. The combat system is integrated via the Hanwha Systems Naval Shield Baseline 2 CMS, coupled with the Hensel TRS-3D Phased Array Radar for search operations and Celix NA-25X Fire Control Radar. Its armament includes an OTO Malara 76mm Super Rapid Gun, a Selsun Smash 30mm gun, and four S and T Motive K 6.50 caliber guns. One of the frigate's notable offensive weapons is the SSM 700 KC Star Missile, a sea skimming, surface to surface anti ship missile developed by South Korea's Agency for Defense Development. The missile, capable of reaching speeds of Mach.95, uses GPS-aided inertial navigation for mid-course guidance and active radar homing for terminal targeting. It has a range exceeding 180 kilometers, a warhead weighing 250 kilograms, and is powered by a turbojet engine. The SSM 700 KC Star is deployed on twin canisters, ensuring precision targeting against maritime threats. In addition to the missile systems, BRP Jose Rizal also has defensive features like the Elbit Systems Elizra NS9300A Electronic Warfare Suite, and Terma Sea Guard decoy launchers. It is also equipped with torpedo tubes for anti-submarine warfare and Mistral Simbad RC launchers for air defense. Among other highlights, the exercise saw the first deployment of the Army's mid-range capability in a simulated maritime strike on the first island chain and the refinement of a combined sensor-to-shooter kill chain network between the three participating forces. The exercise was about the collective capability of combined fires networks and increasing interoperability to sense and shoot targets from a variety of Philippines, US and Australian land, sea and air platforms. Last year's iteration also involved the sinking of a decommissioned ship in the South China Sea, though not with an anti-ship missile. This year, the exercise planners focused on linking sensors to missile systems and aircraft. A variety of platforms, both on the ground and in the air, passed data to the Combined Coordination Center, which was located hundreds of kilometers south of the maritime strike activity in Manila. A Navy P-8 Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft, 
a Royal Australian Air Force E-7 A wedge tail early warning and control aircraft, and a Marine Corps TPS-80 ground, air task-oriented radar, helped provide data to the command center to target of the decommissioned tanker. For the exercise's shooters, the three countries deployed a myriad of platforms and munitions. U.S. Air Force F-16s from the Misawa-based 13th Fighter Squadron dropped multiple JDAM guided bombs, and Philippine Navy fast attack boats fired off spike missiles against the 325-foot-long tanker. An AC-130J Ghost Rider also took part in the drill. Despite the firepower deployed, a press release said the maritime strike was designed to maximize the training value, the goal was to keep the target vessel afloat for as long as possible before ultimately sinking it. U.S. Marine Captain Colin Kennard, a public affairs officer covering the exercise, highlighted the maritime strike activity came from an Indo-Pacific command effort called the Pacific Multi-Domain Training and Experimentation Capability Program. This year's Balakatan programs, modernized and distributed training capability will enhance warfighting readiness to compete against peer-level adversaries at speed, scope, scale, and operational distances, both in the near term and in the future. This simulation of what was described as adversarial air and maritime threats elevates training between U.S. and partner forces across the region that matches real-world conflict as much as possible. Kicking off Balakatan 2024 took a higher-end approach to training with its focus on four combined joint all-domain operations simulated in field training exercises in key locations across the country. Um, you know, the ability of both the U.S. Um, and the Filipino, you know, Army and Air Force to work together to achieve this is, is extremely lethal. So it's a, it's a great step forward for everybody. You know, uh, you, you don't take the field with, with a new team right before the big game, right? You have, you have quite a few practices, and that's what we're doing here, uh, is, is getting out into the field and practicing alongside one another so we can learn, you know, how each other operates and how we're going to react to certain scenarios. So uh, hugely important for us. The drills accompany Manila's new comprehensive Archipelagic defense concept, which pushes the boundaries of Philippine defense to cover the country's exclusive economic zone. This year's Balakatan also saw the first activities in the South China Sea and the northernmost territories in the Luzon Strait near Taiwan. While Balakatan 2024 is set to wrap up last week, this summer will see more joint military drills between Washington and Manila as the two pledge to strengthen defense ties in the face of an increasingly assertive China. The 39th edition of Balakatan exercise involved 16,000 troops, 11,000 from the US and 5,000 from the Philippine side, as well as 150 Australian and 100 French armed forces, are taking part in this year's edition of the Balakatan drills. The annual exercise is being carried out under the two countries' mutual defense treaty, a 1951 agreement that calls on both countries to aid each other in times of aggression by an external power. In previous pronouncements, the Pentagon said it was prepared to assist Manila if it invoked the treaty amid threats from other nations. The U.S.-Philippines Mutual Defense Treaty evolved into the 1998 Visiting Forces Agreement VFA, and the 2014 Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement EDCA. Island retaking exercise in far northern Philippines appears to be in preparation for hostilities breaking out over Taiwan, and sinking of Chinese-made Philippine Navy ship, repelling of invasion force among other key exercises, as troops test viability of U.S. missile deployment. Philippine and U.S. forces are simulating scenarios that observers say are relevant to potential conflicts over Taiwan and the South China Sea with missions involving the retaking of an island and the sinking of a Chinese-made vessel in the final week of this year's Balakatan joint military exercises. A small contingent of U.S. and Philippine Marines disembarked from Black Hawk helicopters in Ibaya, a remote town located on the Philippines' northernmost island of the same name, which is about 100 miles south of Taiwan. Their mission was to practice retaking the remote island, which lies along the strategic Bashi Channel, from a foreign invader. Given the Philippines' proximity, a cross-strait crisis can have very tangible spillover effects in terms of either refugees fleeing the conflict or military forces occupying the strategic islands for their own use. In 21st century warfare, the Batanas Islands could provide an ideal location to conceal small, mobile missile systems such as the U.S. Army's Typhon missile launcher, which made an appearance at this year's Balakatan and has a range of 370 kilometers.
The Typhon missile system was not fired during the Balakatan drills, but a similar system was included to test the feasibility and effectiveness of deploying it on land using an airlift. Besides the island retaking drill, also saw a separate exercise focused on repelling an invasion force, which took place along the sand dunes of Lawag in Ilocos Norte on the northwestern tip of Luzon. This large-scale war game included 150 Australian soldiers from the 1st Battalion of the Royal Australian Regiment. The climax of the 19-day exercises took place last week, with a multilateral maritime strike or sinking of the BRP Lake Kaliraya, a 4,700-ton Philippine Navy vessel built in China. The Philippine Navy will for the first time, fire an SSM 700KC Star anti-ship cruise missile at the Caliraya, which was towed to its target location beyond the 12 nautical mile boundary of the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. The goal of the exercise is to achieve a controlled sinking of the Caliraya. The military said the choice of the Chinese-made target was not intentional and not meant to send a message to any particular country. In response to questions about whether they might be provoking China, both Philippine and U.S. military officials have insisted that this year's exercises, which also included firing rockets towards the disputed waters of the South China Sea, are not aimed at any particular country. Lohiko said in a briefing on April 17 that the military chose locations that gave them the most training value, the most challenges, including weather and capability issues, and how to integrate the capabilities of their treaty allies, and that warships from several participating nations would carry out the sinking drill in the northern Philippines. After earning the ire of Chinese state media, the Philippine Navy on Tuesday said the decision to use an old made-in-China ship as a mock target in the Balakatan war games was not intentional. It's just coincidental. It's not complicated, it's coincidental. <laughs> we have to check. If ever it is, it's no, 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 no pun intended, no meaning to that. It's just coincidental, if ever it is. And so, sir, China should not make an issue out of it. No issue with that. There's no issue with that. Uh, the vessel has been used in the Philippines for a long, long time. So uh, any attachment, uh, if ever there is any, uh, doesn't uh, matter at all. This year's Balakatan drills come amid heightened tensions between Beijing and Manila after numerous maritime confrontations involving their vessels in the South China Sea. The Philippines has also been increasing its security ties with the U.S., which has a mutual defense treaty with Manila that U.S. officials, including President Joe Biden, have promised as ironclad. I want to be very clear. The United States defense commitment to the Philippines is ironclad. Any attack on the Filipino aircraft vessels or armed forces will invoke a mut our mutual defense treaty with the Philippines. What makes this year's exercise notable is its occurrence during the armed forces of the Philippines' shift to the comprehensive archipelago each defense concept, which looks to orient the country's military against external threats. In February 2023, the Philippines gave the United States access to four new military sites under the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement between the two countries, a move largely aimed at deterring any potential plan from Beijing to attack Taiwan. Signed in 2014, EDCA supplements the Visiting Forces Agreement VFA, a 1999 bilateral pact providing a legal basis for large-scale joint military exercises between the U.S. and Philippines. Meanwhile, the Philippine Coast Guard deployed two capital ships and their crew to participate in the final leg of the Philippines-United States joint drills. Rear Admiral Armando Balila, spokesperson for the PCG, said they deployed BRP Melchora Aquino and BRP Malapasqua along with 150 personnel to participate in the historic activity.